This is REZ 2024-04, Blackstone Road subdivision. This involves 62 acres. Currently R1 and the request is for R10 and this will be served by county utilities. Mr. Diller. Thanks, sir. The request for R10 is in order to support 110 lot subdivision, which is in line with the suburban area, character area. Again, the county utilities provide that caving of Blackstone Road can support this traffic. There are some weapons on the property, as noted here, and they're slated to be left alone. Uh, you'll note 2020 Valentine Subdivision. This is the property immediately to the east, more or less splitting this field. This was approved uh, pretty much to this site plan. You'll notice the mixture of lot sizes in here with the orange being half acre, the blue a third acre, and the yellow being the tenth of an acre. This was a conditional use that uh, came about from opposition from the neighbors to the north requesting the half acre lot sizes. Uh, when the applicant submitted their plan, they also kept with the half acre lots along Clydestone Road. You'll notice they also mixed in the third acre as well as the tenth of an acre. So again, this is how they've maximized 110 lots, varying lot sizes, and complementing its existing Valentine subdivision to the east. So staff is still recommending that one condition that the half acre lots abutting Clydestone Road be in place. And this is how the two neighborhoods, if approved, might abut. So you see the two points of ingress and egress on Clydestone and then out to the east on Simpson. You see a mixture of wetlands serving as some natural buffers there. But overall, the Planning Commission recommended approval 6 0 with the condition that the lots of Bunny Fly so remain happy. There was support provided by the neighbor to the north. There was an agreement between the applicant and that neighbor for house sizes and materials. Uh, that's also in your packets there, but that is not a recommendation from staff for conditions. That is just something to be aware of, as that was a concern last time in 2020 for Valentine. But like I said, the developer and the, and the opposition to the north seem to have come to an agreement about how they like this neighborhood to be built out. And that is, that is for them to decide. I believe it can be covered in covenants. Any questions? Mr. Bill, I have one. On the Valentine subdivision, if I recall, there were some conditions that were placed on it that were outside of their lot size. Yes, sir. As far as uh, lots facing interior roads, uh, was a condition the provision for the uh, park amenities here as well. Uh, those were the conditions in writing by the commission at that time. The, the lot size houses and materials was something that was brought up again by the opposition. Um, it was discussed, but it was not made official part of the motion for the condition to rezone. So that's why it was made aware. So they were actually, with the Valentine developer, some of those conditions were placed in there as far as covenants for the subdivision? Some of them were part of the rezoning condition, and then some were placed in non covenants. And I believe there was an issue uh, with the, with the covenants moving forward, and that's why the, this, this new applicant and the same opposition came to an agreement, both signed it in writing. Okay. So they've agreed to the same covenant slash zoning uh, conditions as Valentine's Day. Yes, sir. So then the design standards don't need to be part of our, if, if we go around to approve it, we don't need to make that a condition. We don't, but well, we just, that's, We've helped Valentine do those covenants, and I think it's in all fairness to the community out there that we make sure, and which it sounds like that that's been taken care of, that those covenants transfer over to this development as well. Yeah. Any other questions? 